Good day, good day, everyone. And once again, we are back together. Hey, your favorite uncle is still going to give you some good content. All right, so if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you do the right thing. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at some 3D trig in preparation for those prelims. All right, let's get right into it. This is from the Eastern Cape um, paper uh, from May and June. All right, so let's look at the question. It says, in the figure below, OA is a vertical tower and the point K and T are in the same horizontal plane, right? So for me, I always like, you know, to kind of shade that horizontal plane so that, you know, we're looking at that horizontal plane over there. All right. Okay. So um, in this case, they tell us that um, OAK or AOK rather is equal to x and kat is 90 plus x and kat is 2x okay all of those are indicated and ok line ok is actually two units all right now here's what they want us to do they want us to express ak right in terms of the trigonometric functions uh, uh, value of x in two different ways and hence or otherwise determine the length of kt. All right, so if we're looking at uh, ak, now um, I want us to quickly have a look at where that ak is. And when it comes to 3D trig, I want you to note every single time you're going to always first start where or with the triangle that has the most information. All right, now if you look at that line ak, it's actually a line that is in between two triangles, right? The first triangle is triangle OAK, right? So meaning this triangle over here, all right? Um, and the second triangle is AKT. So I'm going to first start by using uh, AK, right? Or rather, I mean uh, triangle a, uh, OAK, right? to try and express that value. Now, because it's a 90 degree triangle, note that it's a 90 degree triangle and what do we have? We've got, in this case, the angle and we are looking for the side that is opposite that angle, right? But what else do we have? We've got, in this case, the two units for OK, right? So we've got the hypotenuse in that case, right? So let's find an expression for line AK in terms of that, okay? Um, so I'm going to say, right, for 7.1, okay, let's write it nicely. So for 7.1, I'm going to first express AK, right? In fact, let's say uh, in triangle, so that we know which triangle we're working in. In triangle OAK, OAK, there it is right? In this case, we've got, we want the opposite side, we've got the hypotenuse. So we're going to say the sine of x, right? So that angle is going to be the opposite side, which is ak, over the hypotenuse, which is ok, right? And in this case, of course, we know that sine of x, uh, ak is the side that we're looking for, and we're looking for the hypotenuse, uh, rather we've got the hypotenuse, which is uh, two units. So we can now express AK. If we cross multiply AK times one, that will give us AK. And this would be two, the sine of X. All right. So that is then an expression uh, for AK, right? Now, remember they said, hence, determine in this case, um, the, the, you know, the length of KT, right? So now what I'm going to do is we're going to go into the other triangle and say, right, so if you look at a uh, triangle uh, AKT, right, we've got the angle there, which is 90 plus X. Okay, let me try and indicate that one. Okay, so we've got the angle, which is 90 plus X. We are looking for the side that is opposite that angle, right? Which is line KT. But note, what do we also have? We've got that side AK. We've got an expression for KA, 
right? Uh, AK or KA. Uh, in this case, we also have the angle uh, opposite that side, okay? So remember, in this case, I can use the sine rule. It's not a 90 degree triangle, right? So I can actually use the sine rule in that case, right? So I can say, right, in triangle, so I'm going to say in triangle AKT, you remember uh, that triangle there? So that's AKT, uh, right, let's write that nicely, right? So we want the side uh, KT, so I'm going to say KT over the um, sine of the angle opposite that. So that's KT, all right? So let's go back. So that's KT side KT over the sine of 90 plus X, that angle over there, right? So that's going to be uh, KT divided by the sine. Okay, we can uh, first say sine of angle A, right? Uh, over there, which will be equal to AK, which will be equal to AK, which we've expressed over the sine of the angle opposite AK, which is angle T, right? So I'm going to say in uh, angle T there. So that's going to be KT over the sine of, now angle A we said is 90 plus X, and AK in this particular case, uh, remember it's what we have actually derived up there, so I'm going to uh, substitute that. So that's 2 sine of x, right? Uh, right, let's try and remove that. So 2 sine of x divided by the sine of 2x. All right, now please, I want you to note at this stage, um, remember, 3D trig is still trigonometry. So which means everything that we know about trigonometry, we're still going to apply in this section. So I'm going to say, right, so KT would be equal to, in fact, uh, let's just try and simplify what we have over there, right? So this is going to be KT. Now, sine of 90 plus, let's have our cast diagram, right? So 90 plus would be in the second quadrant, right? Sine is positive there. So uh, that would result in a positive ratio. However, remember that once we've got 90 plus or 90 minus or 270, right, we change in this case into co-functions. So that will be cos of x, right? So cos is, uh, I mean, sine is positive. So uh, although it now changes to cos because of that 90, all right? So that's cos of x. So this will become 2 sine x. And note this, we've got a double angle uh, at the bottom there. So I'm going to change that to a single angle and to single angle. So that's 2 sine x cos of x. Now, let's try and get rid of that. That cancels with that and that cancels with that. We're left with a 1 over there, right? So I want you to note in this case what happens to the value of kt. If we, cr uh, we cross multiply, we have now kt uh, in fact, I'm hoping that you can already see that those are going to cancel. So this would be KT cos of X, if you cross multiply, would be cos of X times 1, which will be cos of X, right? And of course, we're going to divide by cos X on both sides, okay? And in this case, what would be uh, the value of KT? You can see that it is going to be 1 unit, okay? Right, and so that is how that cookie crumbles, right? So uh, we've got now the value for KT, okay? Right, uh, let's go on to the next one. Now they say to us, show that AT, now let's go back to AT. So they say show that AT, which is this side over here, right? Uh, is given by that expression, cos of 3x over uh, cos of x. Now, if we go back to what we have, um, you know, in that particular triangle, right, so I'm looking for the value of 80, right, 
would it be possible for me to work out this angle over here, right? Of course it would, right? If you uh, take the sum of angles on a triangle, okay, so we'd say angle K plus angle A plus angle T, right, is equal to 180 degrees. Uh, that angle K there is what we're looking for, right? But uh, we know, okay, let's first add those. Uh, angle A is 90 plus X and angle T is 2X uh, equal to 180. Now let's try and work out the value of K, right? So 180 minus 90, that would be 90. Okay, so you end up with 90 minus 3X, okay? Right, so now we're looking for the expression for AT, right? Uh, I'm still going to use a K. Let's use KT because we already found out this is one unit, okay? So again, we're going to use our sign rule, right? And by the way, uh, notice in this case, uh, this is 7.2, right? So in 7.2, I'm going to say, well, uh, again, in, in triangle AKT, right, we had, um, because we're looking now for KT, uh, AT rather, so I'm going to say AT over the sine of K, AT over the sine of K is equal to, right, remember, kt over the sine of 90 plus x um, so that's kt over the sine of that 90 plus x all right now let's try and work it out quickly right we're looking for the expression for kt for at rather uh, over the sine of what is our k in this case this is 90 minus remember it's the one that we uh, we got there, we said it's 90 minus 3x. Okay, so that's 90 minus 3x is equal to kt, remember this is one unit, over the sine of uh, our angle k there, uh, angle a rather, and that is 90 plus x, which is what we substituted there, right? So sine of 90 plus x. But of course, we're going to use our reduction formula again, Right, so that's going to be 80 over, now again, sine of 90 minus 3x, that's in the first quadrant, right? Sine is positive there, but because of that 90, we're going to change to cos of 3x, which is equal to 1 over, in this case again, this is going to be cos of x, okay? Right, remember we said if it's 90 plus, 90 minus, or 270 plus, or 270 minus, we will change to co-functions. So, um, right, if we multiply by cos of x on both sides, so that we get rid, cos of 3x rather, so what I do on the left, I do on the right, so that cancels with that, I'm left with 80 will be equal to cos of 3x, remember, that's cos 3x over 1, so that's cos of 3x divided by cos of x. All right, and that is how you get that value there uh, that you are supposed to find. All right, now let's go on to the next one. They say to us, simplify to a trigonometric function, right, of, uh, so we simplifying cos of 3x over cos x uh, to a trigonometric function of sine of x. Right, now let's do that. So that's 7.3. We're going to say, right, if we've got cos of 3x divided by cos of x. Now, what I'm going to do, ladies and gents, because, of course, we can work with double angles, isn't it? So I'm going to make this cos of 2x plus x. Agree with me, I've changed absolutely nothing, right? So that becomes cos of uh, x, right? Okay, so uh, we've got... Now, for the compound angle of cos, uh, cos x or cos of a plus b, remember, cos of a plus b gives us cos of a, cos b, 
minus, now remember I change the sign, minus sine of A sine of B, right? So I'm going to apply that here. So I have cos of 2x, cos of x, right, minus sine of 2x, sine of x, divided by cos of 2x. All right, now um, I can see that, of course, we've got a, a double angle of uh, uh, cos 2x there and another double angle of sine 2x. So let me start by, um, I'm going to leave the one for cos 2x for now until I know for sure what to change it to, okay? So cos of x minus, but for sine x, I know this is 2 sine x cos x, right? Multiplied by sine x divided by the cos of, uh, I'm not sure why I wrote cos 2x there. This is cos x, okay? Right, so let's take out the common factor. Uh, at the top, we've got cos x as the common factor. So if we take out that cos x, what are we left with? We've got cos 2x, okay, minus 2. Now note the sine x and sine x that would make 2 sine squared of x divided by the cos of x, right? So, of course, this and that cancel out, right? Now, remember, they said we should write this expression as an expression of sine x, right? So, allow me to convert this cos of 2x into an expression of the sine of x, right? So we know that cos of 2x is 1 minus uh, 2 sine squared of x, right? So that's that guy. But we've got a mi uh, another minus 2 sine squared of x. And so what do we end up having, right? We've got 1 minus 4 sine squared of x. Right, so that is our final answer. They did say we should write it as an expression of the sine of x. Okay, going back to the question, right? Uh, they said to a, a trigonometric function of the sine of x. And in this case, that is how this cookie crumbles. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. All right, uh, of course, I'm going to still be coming back today uh, with some geometry and we'll see if we can slot in some more stuff as the day goes by. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop shop.